and I'm leaving here today and I have no clue what they're doing with my money. Now at five, time is running out for a controversial budget, the latest on the troubles in Cicero and what's next. Plus, after snow overnight, first alert meteorologist Wayne Mahar has a look at what's coming next. But first, breaking details in the case against SU assistant coach Bernie Fine. What he has to say straight ahead. NBC3 News at 5 starts right now. From CNY Central, this is NBC3 News at 5. An enhanced widescreen. Voted best newscast by the Syracuse Press Club. Good evening, I'm Jackie Robinson. Details continue to break tonight into disturbing allegations against Syracuse University assistant basketball coach Bernie Fine. Tonight, he says the sexual abuse accusations against him are patently false. Meanwhile, police are expanding their investigation. Our extensive breaking news of the investigation continues tonight. Matt Mulcahy is live at the Carmelo Anthony Center at Syracuse University with the latest breaking details. Matt. Well, Jackie, this story has developed hour by hour by hour after it first broke last night just after 7 o'clock. We're here live at the Carmelo K. Anthony Center at Manley Fieldhouse on the Syracuse University campus. The Syracuse University Orange basketball team is practicing inside right now for the first time since these allegations surfaced. Coach Jim Beheim is inside. Bernie Fine is not inside as he has been put on administrative leave. His attorney put out a statement on his behalf late today, and in that, as Jackie just mentioned, Fine said that these allegations are patently false. The statement goes on to say, sadly, we live in an allegation-based society and an internet age where in a matter of minutes, one's lifelong reputation can be severely damaged. I'm confident that as in the past, a review of these allegations will be discredited and will restore my reputation. That's coming from Bernie Fine. And then also a late development today, late in the afternoon, Syracuse police released a statement asking anyone with information about past or even recent sexual abuse cases involving Bernie Fine to contact the Syracuse Police Department. The phone number is 442-5222. This is the first reference to the possibility of recent victims in this investigation. In the statement, officers say the sexual abuse allegations occurred many years ago, but were brought to the department just yesterday. Police say the Syracuse Police Department has a responsibility to thoroughly investigate all of these investigations. Now, the purpose of this investigation is to determine if there had in fact been any sexual abuse in the past and if there are any current victims in this case. Another piece of this story that's developing tonight is from the Onondaga County District Attorney who has raised concerns about the fact that he was not notified about these prior investigations, first by the Syracuse Police and secondly by the University. Jim Kenyon's been following that angle tonight. Jim? Well, Matt, I had a phone conversation with Bill Fitzpatrick today and it was very obvious from my conversation with him. He is very unhappy with the way these allegations were investigated by both the Syracuse Police Department and Syracuse University and he says it, they apparently have violated a protocol in the way that uh, allegations of this nature are to be investigated. Bernie Fine's main accuser, Bobby Davis, says he went to Syracuse police in 2003 and told them he had been repeatedly molested. But he also says the investigator told him that because the incident supposedly took place as far back as the mid-80s, the statute of limitation had run out and police could do nothing. Davis says he then went to Syracuse University in 05 with the same allegations. SU says it conducted an extensive investigation but could not corroborate the accusations. What concerns District Attorney Bill Fitzpatrick is that in both instances, his office was not notified a violation of protocol. What concerns me about it is why my office wasn't notified. Uh, anytime there's an allegation of sexual abuse, we have protocols that are in place. We have, uh, we've worked for years to put these in place. We have a uh, specially trained abuse persons unit. The DA says that now the police have reopened their investigation, he intends to thoroughly review their findings. But he too feels the passage of time could make prosecution impossible. Admittedly, based on these two individuals, there's nothing that I could do in terms of prosecution uh, because the statute of limitations has run. However, uh, offenders uh, who commit acts of molestation on children don't stop. And we would certainly want to have been involved to see uh, if there were any other people at risk and then to see whether or not these allegations 
allegations uh, were accurate. District Attorney Fitzpatrick says he owes it to both Bernie Fine, who he says proclaims his innocence, and his accusers to conduct a complete and thorough investigation. And we're, and we're back live here, and I did contact uh, the Syracuse police spokesman, Tom Kellen Canellan, to respond to uh, Fitzpatrick's claim that they may have violated protocol by not notifying his office. Uh, Canellan says that he expects they will respond, but not at this time, and new at 6 will get Syracuse University's response to the same claim by uh, Bill Fitzpatrick. One of the concerns certainly raised community-wide and nationally is can there be an impartial investigation here? Uh, the police chief uh, at the time of these original allegations was Dennis Duval and right. all American here at Syracuse University, played right there in Manly Fieldhouse when Beheim was an assistant. Were you able to reach him today? Uh, I did uh, leave uh, messages at his uh, business in Syracuse. He has not responded to me. And, and what about this idea of, of a cover-up? What's the DA saying about that as a possibility at this Well, point? he doesn't feel that uh, that there's necessarily a cover-up. He just feels that they should have brought his office into it. He is the top uh, law enforcer in Onondaga County and the crimes of this nature require that his office be notified. Uh, he did note today though that uh, that uh, both uh, uh, Bobby Davis and his stepbrother uh, Mike Lang were interviewed by Syracuse police last night so they are back on this case. All right thank you Jim Moore in a little while speaking of Bobby Davis one of the accusers he's been speaking publicly through ESPN doing interviews with Mark Schwartz who is the one who broke this story 39 year old Bobby Davis says the molestation started in 1980 and continued until he was 27 years old. Davis says it happened in Fine's home, at Syracuse University basketball facilities, and on team road trips. 11, 10 years old, and uh, he started uh, trying to touch me and things like that, you know, and I, honestly, I don't even remember if I um, thought that was what was supposed to happen, you know. I, I know I cringed up and didn't want it to happen, and I was very, you know, like what's going on? You know, I, I was, it's just I, I just remember being disgusted in a sense. You know, but that's when everything. You know, when he started trying to touch me, um, my private. You didn't feel like. Davis's stepbrother, 45-year-old Mike Lang, also says Fine molested him while in elementary school. Lang was also a ball boy. He's the second accuser to come forward, which led to this being publicized last night. Now, Davis's former girlfriend, Danielle Roche, is also supporting claims tonight. Roche says she was Davis's girlfriend in high school, worked as a babysitter for the Fine family. She says something seemed unusual about the relationship between Davis and Fine. I could just tell there was a lot of secrets, there was a lot of closed doors, there was a lot of closed blinds in his office, there was a lot of, I need to see him privately, I need you to come in my office, I need you to come downstairs. Now, Roche remains close friends with Bobby Davis, something that investigators will be keeping in mind. Now, head coach Jim Beheim, he has not talked in front of a camera today, although he has done radio interviews, given statements late last night. He has vehemently defended his friend and longtime colleague, Bernie Fine. He says he believes the accuser, Bobby Davis, is coming forward to get money. As for accusations, the Hall of Fame coach walked in on Davis and Fine's room on the road. Beheim says that's just not true. He spoke with radio station TK99 first thing this morning. Uh, I never saw that. I've never been in Bernie Fine's road, room on the road. Uh, and I believe uh, I've known Bernie for 50 years, and uh, uh, I don't believe this. Now, Beheim has said that he never witnessed anything he considered wrong. He said if he had, he certainly would have reported it and investigated it. We do have continuing coverage throughout the newscast tonight. Coming up, we're going to talk with reporter Brandon Roth, who's been here on the SU campus throughout the day today, waiting to see who was coming and going, including players who are inside practicing right now. At 5.30, we'll have reactions from fans in the online world, and we'll also be talking to people right here in central New York. This is certainly the buzz of the weekend here. What happened with Bernie Fine, and what will these investigations end up bringing in terms of in terms of results in the end? Jackie, we have a lot more coming up live from the Mellow Center here at SU. Back to you. Thanks, Matt. We'll check in with you later. New tonight, Joe Paterno, the head coach, in the middle of another sex abuse scandal, is now undergoing cancer treatment. Paterno's son says the coach has been diagnosed with a treatable form of lung cancer. He is currently undergoing treatment. Doctors are optimistic he will make a full recovery. Paterno is 84 years old. 
Well, taking a live look over the city of Syracuse tonight, we're facing a clear but a very chilly evening. First alert, Chief Meteorologist Wayne Mahar is outside on the weather deck tonight, tracking the forecast. Wayne, we woke up, some people saw snow. 53 degrees, the full forecast is coming up. A Central Square couple is facing charges tonight after police say they bound a child to a chair. Oswego County Sheriff deputies say that 33-year-old Matthew Roof used zip ties and duct tape to bound the child to a chair. His wife, 32-year-old Tina, is accused of witnessing the incident and not doing anything to stop it. Both were arraigned in town of Hastings Court. They're due back in court next Wednesday. The clock is ticking for the town of Cicero. Counselors and Supervisor Judy Boyke don't have long to reach a budget agreement. At Wednesday night's board meeting, counselors rejected a budget with a 2.75% tax increase and ended up with a 14% hike. But that's not allowed under state's new 2% cap. A special budget meeting is scheduled for 1 p.m. on Sunday. Both sides say the proposed 14% increase is unacceptable, but haven't been able to agree on what to cut. Many Cicero neighbors say they just want their elected officials to work out a reasonable plan without a huge tax hike. Like I tell my kid, I don't care what you do with your money, but when you want my money, I want to know what you're doing with it. And I'm leaving here today and I have no clue what they're doing with my money. The supervisors and town councilors say that they will negotiate through the weekend on a new budget. In our Facebook story of the day today, you voted to hear more about whether it's possible to outgrow an allergy. Coming up, new tests that could make a big difference for patients who are allergic to penicillin. And our breaking news team coverage of the Bernie Fine investigation continues tonight. Still ahead, Brandon Roth joins Matt Mulcahy to talk about what's happening on the SU campus right now. CMI Central is giving you the chance to get big discounts for local restaurants, shops, and other businesses. Today's deal is for a lodge and water park getaway from Greek Peak. And you can find it by clicking on the CMI Central Deal section on our homepage. And to save some time in your busy schedule, just sign up to have us email our daily deals directly to your inbox. And that's the latest from the weather outside. Thanks, Wayne. In our Facebook story of the day today, you voted to hear more about whether it's possible to outgrow an allergy. A simple test is allowing many patients to safely use the popular antibiotic penicillin, even if they've been allergic to it in the past. Now, people who have been allergic to penicillin for years are now passing the test. Doctors say the test can allow patients a chance to benefit from penicillin and 40 other medications in the same class of drugs. And when a patient says that they're penicillin allergic, we need to use alternative drugs that are more, ex more expensive, potentially more toxic, and develop, and they create a problem of drug resistance. The test is considered 99% accurate. Work is underway for a new test that will be 100% accurate. And remember, you can weigh in on our Facebook story of the day every weekday morning starting at 6 on our Facebook page. Now from Syracuse and across the country, people are talking tonight about the allegations against Syracuse University assistant head coach Bernie Fine. Coming up at 5.30, a look at the reaction in the social media world after Coach Fine became an online sensation. NBC3 is giving one lucky viewer the chance to see the Ellen DeGeneres show live. All you have to do is watch Ellen at 4 o'clock, then tune in to NBC3 News at 5. If your name is announced, you'll get the chance to win a prize pack and be entered to win the grand prize of tickets to the show, round-trip airfare from JetBlue, hotel accommodations, and spending money. To enter, visit cmycentral.com and click on Contest Corner. For another chance to win, listen to Ted and Amy on 93Q the next morning for a different trivia question and a second chance to win. The contest ends November 23rd. Today's winner is Ruth Rhodes. And today's question is, today Ellen celebrated the opening of the new movie Twilight Breaking Dawn. Singer Bruno Mars came on and sang the lead song from the new hit movie, Name the Song. If you're notified as a winner, you'll have until midnight to respond.
are continuing our coverage. You're breaking details in the Bernie Fine investigation. Matt Mulcahy is standing by live at the Carmelo Anthony Center on the Syracuse University Hill right now. He's there with our own Brandon Roth. And tonight, guys, what is the mood on campus? Well, Jackie, the mood is, is certainly one of concern. People want to know what uh, happened uh, with Bernie Fine. Where did these allegations come from? Are they valid? Uh, what details are going to come out in the investigation? Brandon Roth joins me now. He's been here on campus and specifically here at the Mellow Center throughout the day. And, and Brandon, I know you've seen a couple of players coming and going. There was some question of whether they would practice at the Dome or yeah. practice here at their regular facility. Uh, yeah. What have you seen going on here today? Well, that was a big question of where they were going to hold practice. Um, and Pete Moore for the University Sports Information Office just came out and saying that, in fact, uh, there's going to be no comment from the university. They, they have had practice. In fact, they are practicing as we speak here. Uh, we saw Fab Mello. I saw Fab Mello, Chris Joseph coming in. No comments from the players. But we're hearing from students that know some of the players that they are very upset about these allegations. Obviously, Bertie Fine is a very popular coach yes. with the players and the former players. A number have come out in support of him uh, uh, throughout all this. I, I noticed when I went inside the Mello Center, they have some curtains up. There's an area where you can yeah. normally uh, fans, even if they happen to be walking through, can kind of see some of the players practicing. Those curtains yeah. went up purposely today, though. Yes, those curtains went up uh, shortly after we saw some of the players coming in. They blocked off practice. Now, Pete Moore did say that while Coach Beheim is not going to make any comment today or prior to the game tomorrow, that in his words, he may very well address this issue at a press conference following the game against Colgate tomorrow. Of course, that game's at 4 o'clock. So we may hear something then from the, from the program. We have also learned tonight that Jerry Mack Mayor, who obviously is a, one of the more popular players yeah. in recent years here, has now been elevated from a graduate assistant onto the regular staff to take the place temporarily of Bernie Fine, who's on this administrative leave. Uh, you can understand why there would be some responsibilities that a coach would need to fill in on there, wouldn't you? Yeah, and it's interesting because uh, one of the there's national all kinds of national media here, and they won't, well, they'd asked him about is this going to be the first game with Bernie Fine uh, not being on the sidelines? Mm. And Pete Moore had said that he's been on the sidelines. Pete Moore has been here 14 years. Yeah. So obviously this is. Is going to be very different for the players not having Bernie Fine. And it's obviously going to be very different for Coach Beheim because Bernie Fine's been his right hand man for 40 years, 40 plus years. Yeah, that's uh, going to that's yeah. be a big difference. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Brandon, yeah. for adding that insight here. We'll continue our live team coverage from the Amalo Center here on the SU campus in just a short while, Jackie. We continue to follow up-to-the-minute information after sex abuse allegations have been levied against longtime Syracuse University basketball assistant coach Bernie Fine. Good evening. I'm Jackie Robinson. We continue our live team coverage from Syracuse University tonight. Matt Mulcahy is standing by at the Carmelo Anthony Center with up-to-the-minute information. Matt? Well, Jackie, late this afternoon, the Syracuse Police Department released a new statement calling for victims from the past and recent victims of potential sexual abuse from assistant coach Bernie Fine, asking anyone who might be out there, a blanket request, please contact the authorities. Now, police say they are looking to find out if there are current victims. Right now, ESPN's Outside the Lines is reporting that two former SU ball boys are claiming that they were sexually assaulted by Bernie Fine. A third corroborative witness came forward in the case, did an interview with ESPN today. We know those first two witnesses, by the way, testified last night in a in, uh, in investigation with Syracuse police detectives. Now, the university and Syracuse police investigated claims from Bobby Davis six years ago. They did that in 2005. Davis alleges that he was molested hundreds, maybe even thousands of times in the 80s and 90s. The man claims he was brought on team trips to the Final Four, Maui, the Big East Tournament, all when he was a boy. Now, there was not enough evidence for either SU or the police to take this case any further against the SU assistant coach. Police told Davis the statute of limitations had passed on the case, a matter that's now being looked into. Of course, after the Penn State scandal with Joe Paterno and Coach Sandusky, once again, Bobby Davis wanted to speak out about these allegations, and so did his stepbrother, Michael Lang, who you see here. Now Syracuse police have reopened their investigation into those claims. Now, late today, just before we went on the air at 5 o'clock, Bernie Fine issued his own statement about this, saying this, Sadly, we live in an allegation-based society and an Internet age where in a matter of minutes one's lifelong reputation can be severely damaged. I'm confident that, as in the past, a review of these allegations will be discredited and my reputation will be restored. 
Well, today now we learned from the Onondaga County District Attorney's Office that the DA, Bill Fitzpatrick, was upset that those prior investigations, both by the Syracuse Police and the Syracuse University staff here and their private law firm, were not referred to the district attorney for further investigation. Jim Kenyon has more on that story. Jim. Yeah, uh, I talked to the district attorney by phone today, and, uh, and he uh, says that basically what happened here is when the uh, Syracuse Police conducted its investigation in 2003, and then in 05 when SU uh, uh, looked into the same allegations, both with the same result, they may have violated a big, uh, an important protocol in the handling of uh, crimes of uh, sexual allegations like this, uh, in that they did not notify the district attorney's office. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, he says he's going to find out what happened. Uh, he has uh, now received SU's investigation that was del hand delivered to his office this morning. He has been personally in touch with uh, police chief Frank Fowler, and he will uh, understand and uh, know the entire uh, uh, contents of the investigation that is now being uh, taking place with the Syracuse police. And to be open about this, the district attorney is a big Syracuse University fan, right. a longtime friend of Jim Beheim. Uh, yet he would be the first to say that he will be setting all that aside and being impartial on well, this. And he, it, he, it's reasonable to say he will get, he'll get that job done. Yeah, he says, listen, he says he owes it to, uh, you know, Bobby Davis and Mike Lang and Bernie Fine to get to the bottom of all of this and, uh, and find out what, in fact, the truth is. Uh, he also admits, though, that uh, because these uh, incidents allegedly occurred as far back as the mid-80s, that the statute of limitations has run out, and uh, he, there will be no real opportunity for prosecution, but uh, as the Syracuse police are looking for uh, any other alleged victims to come forward, there may be some uh, some further action. All right, Jim, thank you very much. We'll get back to you tonight at 6 o'clock with more from the district attorney. One man who covered the Orange for some 20 years, a real fixture in the journalism community in terms of being a beat writer, is former beat writer Bob Snyder. He talked to our sports director John Evanson earlier today about these allegations against Bernie Fine. That's right. I'm here with uh, Bob Snyder, of course, former beat writer for the SU basketball team from 1966 to the uh, to the mid 80s. And uh, the, the story is less than, than 24 hours old. And I know uh, there's a lot to process here as, as we look at the uh, the information from from ESPN and, and what the school is saying. But uh, uh, you, you worked with Bernie and, and covered him in Bayheim from 76 on, basically. What are your thoughts today as, as you hear this stuff? Well, still surprised, uh, shocked, uh, what have you. Uh, I was still with the newspaper uh, a couple of years before I retired when that investigation did begin and was never corroborated and so therefore never hit print. And uh, obviously it was the same thing with ESPN at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're shocked. Uh, this on top of uh, the Penn State situation, it's uh, it's uh, really hard to put your uh, arms around all this stuff. It really is surreal, especially with everything that we've uh, just started to process with Penn State. Um, knowing Bernie the way you do, and then you you know tune into ESPN or you turn on your computer and, and you watch, you see the face of this alleged victim telling his alleged side of the story what goes through your head when, when you hear him talk well you can't make uh, judgments uh, I th you just can't uh, you try not to anyway I, uh, the judgments are going to have to be made by by other people uh, <laughs> it's so hard to believe uh, and it's so horrendous that it's uh, even harder to believe uh, that w one leans over uh, backwards, uh, hoping that it is, of course, all untrue, and uh, you try and sit back and wait until the, the facts come out. You're right, the story has uh, just begun to uh, unfold less than 24 hours old, so um, hopefully we'll start to get some answers soon. Uh, th thank you very much, Bob. My, I appreciate you my joining pleasure. me. My pleasure, sure. Interesting to hear the perspective from Bob Snyder, the longtime beat writer who's watched as many games as anybody at the Carrier Dome, certainly over, over its history and even going back here to Manly Fieldhouse uh, years ago. Now, meanwhile, the SU basketball team is trying to focus on its next game, which is tomorrow night against Colgate at the Carrier Dome. Practice was closed to the media today. Uh, they actually forced everybody out of the building and locked it up as of 5 o'clock for a while. Media was kind of congregating, hoping for, for a statement from Coach Jim Beheim 
time, but uh, the sports information director in charge of basketball, Pete Moore, came out and said there would be no statement from the coach today. In fact, he's not going to be speaking in front of any cameras until after the Colgate game. At that time, he may comment about the fine investigation. In fact, it would be hard to envision him not having something to say about it at that time. That game is scheduled for 4 o'clock in the afternoon, so it would be, say, sometime around 6.30 or so when Coach Beheim might next appear in front of a television camera. We have a lot more of our live team coverage coming up here from the Mellow Center and across central New York as we continue to cover these allegations against associate head coach Bernie Fine, who's now out on administrative leave. Jackie. Thanks, Matt. We'll hear from you again in just a few minutes. We'll check in with you. But right now, we're getting a flood of comments on our CMY Central Facebook page and on Twitter showing us what people are thinking and feeling tonight. And uh, Caitlin, can you tell us? I, there's been a flood of comments. Yeah, and, and, and Jackie, we've been following them vary. throughout the newscast and this afternoon. Actually, Bernie Fine is twen trending worldwide right now on Twitter. Of course, a lot of you are talking about it on our Facebook page. We're asking you, you know, what you think of the investigation, what you think of the allegations, and and the latest news that we're hearing today, you know, Bernie Fine coming out in a statement saying he strongly denies these allegations. We want to show you what some of you are saying on our Facebook page. If we can scroll down a little bit, we have James McAllister here saying his take is we have an excellent DA who will find the truth, wait and let the DA do its job. Uh, you know, Amy Louise Buckley, she's commenting. She's Greg, worried about tomorrow's game. She wants to know what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah, you know, certainly, and it's a valid concern. A lot of people are wondering how this is going to affect the game tomorrow. The SU players practicing right now. Um, you know, only Bernie Fine has been placed on administrative leave. It has not affected the players as of yet. They will be on but the court But he's always tomorrow. been there. <laughs> sure, sure, for the last 35 years. Keeping the stats. You know, we have uh, Breck Holmes saying his gut feeling is that Fine did not do this. Gerald Sumjack saying Syracuse police are just doing the job they have to do as they open this investigation. Of course, we hear late this afternoon that they are asking for anyone that has any information over the course of the last few years to come forward and, and help them out in this investigation as they look to see whether these uh, allegations are valid and, and sort of where we go from here. But you can certainly join our conversation on CNY Central. Find us on Facebook. Uh, we have, you know, hundreds of comments on there. So we'd like to hear what you have to say about it. And we'll continue to follow all developments. Yeah, absolutely, Jackie. Thank you, Caitlin. Also coming up at 5.30, important news for our schools. The changes in state aid benefit school districts in central New York. An interview with the state education commissioner coming up in the Capitol Report. And a landmark event for downtown Syracuse will tell you about the historic theater reopening tonight when the news at 5.30 continues.